Hello everyone, this is Scarzig, and welcome back to another episode of Duelist. Today, we're going to be playing a little bit of Vitruvian. This was a little deck that I shopped up and named Rude Dude. This deck is just pretty, it's pretty dastardly, and it's performing well in the matchups I wouldn't necessarily expect it to. So, uh, let's get in and take a look at the list. We've got three Scion's First Wish, two Cosmic Flesh, three packs it's a fantastic two drop we've got three primus fist to follow up with that two scion second wish two shiro puppy dragon and astral phasing for reach this really comes in handy during the late game and it has synergy with chaos elemental um if we can give this baby flying then the teleportation doesn't matter as much we can get him in to do some face damage i love that this is a three mana four four it's really threatening to play on curve just to keep the board under control, and it's a great uh, damage threat as well if you can get it to get a swing on the opponent. Um, Chaos Elemental, again, the synergy with Scion Second Wish is also really great because you can go face with it and it won't teleport away. Uh, so this was one interaction I thought was really interesting to include in the deck. We've also got three Falcius, another good three drop, one of the best uh, three drops for Vitruvian, of course, uh, the ability to control the board. I've heard rumors of a couple uh, Vitruvian decks actually not running this thing, and I think that that's uh, quite surprising because Falcius can let you take down something like an Earth Sister. Well, I suppose I'm answering my own question there. If people aren't really playing Earth Sister as much anymore, especially for in, in Magmar because of the newer, more aggressive archetypes that have come up, I can maybe see why Falcius isn't seeing as much play. But um, it's still great for our purposes because we do want to try to keep our opponent's board under control and remain tempo positive because we want our bodies to stick onto the board so we can buff them. We've got the Psychic Conduit here. This card, I just have the one copy because in certain matchups it's not as good and in other matchups it's pretty devastating. We might be able to take over a Lantern Fox for a turn, have it trade into something important, get a, um, a, a Phoenix Fire. You might be able to have a Heart Seeker, trade into another Heart Seeker, and keep that aspect of the board under control. I had a match earlier today, before I was recording, where I actually took control of a Bone Reaper, was able to free up one of my own minions to uh, reposition it away from the Bone Reaper, move the Bone Reaper, and attack the enemy general to get some free damage there. So this tends to come in handy in the late game as well. Uh, we've got two Sand Howlers. You could probably substitute this because of the aggressive nature of this deck. This could easily be Wings of Paradise. In a perfect world, I'd really like this to be Silver Tongue Corsair. But um, the, because Silver Tongue Corsair's effect overlaps with Scion's Second Wish, I didn't really want to go for that. We just have the Sand Howler here because it can't be targeted by enemy spells. It makes it even harder to remove. And again, that's one of the rude aspects of this deck. We've got two Entropic Decay for large bodies that we just don't have the tools to clear any other way. And we've got a Mirage Master. I actually, in the testing I've done with this deck, end up replacing this card a lot. The original iteration had two copies because I thought I was going to be really cheeky with this card. Oh man, I'll be able to, you know, get a, a Mechanter Warbeast, Spectral Revenant, something like that. Um, maybe even transform it into an Amara Healer. Like being able to transform this into a large Provoke to counter what your opponent is doing, I think is really strong. The opportunity hasn't come out yet, but if I can get a really clutch Mirage Master, I think that it's definitely worth the value. We've got two Night Watchers in the deck. This has great synergy with all of our buffs cards because of the force field and counters the uh, Spectral Revenants and the Mechanter War Beast that would normally destroy our minion focused deck. Um, the, the ability of Night Watcher to keep our opponent from playing those minions that Night Watcher might want to transform transform into is a bit of anti-synergy for sure, but, uh, I don't mind having both of them because Mirage Master is almost like a spell in a way. You know, you don't, you aren't, its body on its own isn't, uh, what you want it for. It's a reactive card, and that's sort of what makes it function more like a spell. We've got the three Dancing Blades. Once again, very strong body, keeping the enemy's board under control. I've used this in the past to actually kill my own Amara Healer to get that extra burst of damage and close out the game. Dancing Blades, if you recall, 
um, can it, it does damage to any minion in front of it, so you can use it to kill your own minions if need be. You need to be careful with the positioning of this thing. We've got two Starfire Scarabs, of course. Love this card. If my opponent is forced to back away, I can then play from a range. Two Amer Healers, of course, two Dominate Wills to just solidify our late game, and a Grandmaster Noshrak. Um, and that is the list. I was initially I was thinking that Noshrak would be a bit too slow, but I ended up because I cut one of the Mirage Masters, I was like, oh, this is the perfect time to put that card in. I think that the double damage, the ability to burst your opponent down, is just, you know, too much to ignore. So to get to the first match, we're up against Vanar, and this is one of the bad matchups that I was kind of talking about. Um, but I haven't been getting rolled, like I said, as hard as I thought I initially would. So let's let's get in here. We don't need the Entropic Decay really against them. This is most likely the popular control variant. Hmm. Depending on what she opens up with, we could go Falcius first wish. But I think the Pax is going to be strong either way. I, I do like this hand. Okay, this is a lot better. We get to go Pax Primus Fist. And then follow it up with a Falcius to one-shot whatever our opponent summons on their first turn. And then Dancing Blades to follow up to continue controlling the board. And the first wish, of course, for a nice buff to give us more efficient trades. And the card draw is fantastic for this deck. One interesting aspect as well is because of all the buffs we are using, we tend to suck up a lot of our opponent's dispel options. And then once we get to the late game, the Amera Healers, the Starfire Scarabs have a much higher chance to stick. No Shrek might not be answered. And then, you know, we get to roll from there. Ooh, Cryptographer. Wow, so my opponent's going to have access to Warbird right off the bat. Let's see. So I have to be careful about my positioning. I suppose I'll just... Like, this hand is just so good. It's got, like, all of the reactive pieces that I like to see. So I think that we're just going to drop down the packs. Because it's it'll do two damage to something... And he'll be able to clean up the uh, the dervishes there. And, hmm. What if we went this route? He can't, you know what I mean? He can't kill the uh, the packs. He has to wait for it to, to die on my turn. So I think I'm just going to go this way. Because you always want the packs to... to uh, not get answered so cleanly because if your opponent's able to pop it on their turn um then that just lets the dervishes you don't get a chance to use them uh it leaves them vulnerable is what i'm saying to being cleared because you know if you were to just walk forward kill the packs and then both dervishes were happen to be spawned right here or you know there is a high chance that at least one of them would get spawned on one of these corners right so then he gets to uh clear them up okay so he's actually going to go this route I actually like this a lot because he uses a Hearth Sister, which is really important for uh, Vanar to get bring important far threats in or get threats off of their face. So he trades in his minion, uses his Bloodborne spell to clear the Primus Fist. This trade is really good for me because now I am on the play. I get the tempo advantage. Um, one bad thing, however, is I can't use the Falcius to... Um, to trade into anything, and if I step forward here, then this dervish would, would get hit by the warbird. I suppose I do have the first wish to buff it out of range, so it, so that doesn't become a possibility. Um, but let's let's see what we draw. Another Falcius. Okay, and the reason I buffed this one it first is to see what I got, because it can survive warbird now. I'm just going to play the Falcius because I have a backup giving me more mana for another second wish. Hmm. And we'll buff this guy. I like that a lot. An interesting thing might have been to consider buffing the Falcius, making it into a 4-4. Four, four. But my opponent's not going to have access to Frostburn this turn. And if I had double buffed this Dervish, it still dies to Warbird and a general attack. If he wants to go for that line of play, he's put in range of the rest of my bodies. So we'll see what he does here. Wow. 
That's pretty clever. The frigid corona will body block. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so my opponent's dealing with my board pretty well, but overall the plays are sort of weak. I think that I could honestly just play Dancing Blades on curve here and not feel too bad about it. Because then I get the extra mana to use my uh, Bloodborne spell. Do I want Entropic Decay? No, I think it's because I'm so far ahead, it's not really going to matter. Ooh. Now that's interesting. The Night Watcher I actually like a lot better. Because I can do this. Now, I don't want to uh, buff the Night Watcher. Because he is a very likely target to get um, hit with Chromatic Cold or Aspect of the Fox or something regardless. And so I don't want to double up on that. That's fine. Concealing Shroud. Ooh, wow. Glacial Elemental played here where it's going to die for free. I know that he's using it as a way to take pressure off of his face, but the Concealing Shroud does that for him. This gives me the opportunity to Dancing Blades, getting immense value, fully surround the opponent, and... Hmm... I think we just we just buff the, the Falcius and end our turn. Again, the Night Watcher, because it has Force Field, whether or not it has that plus one, plus one doesn't matter as much, but Falcius having that plus one, plus one does. That's pretty cool. Taking out this body in order to move down is really smart. You want to try to create as much distance as you can in this scenario. Also keeps him away from the Dancing Blades. Opponent still has a lot of cards in hand, so we'll see if we can keep the uh, the pressure up. But we do now have the Scion Second Wish. And we're at 7 mana, so that's perfect to just play the Starfire Scarab down as well. Move the Dancing Blades down too. You want to play the Starfire Scarab on this center mana tile, because it can move 2 up and 2 down to have access to the entire board to blast. Night Watcher... Now, Vanar is one class that doesn't use a lot of uh, rush minions, of course. Saber Spine Tiger you see every once in a while. And even if that is in the outside case where they're running that card, um, we're denying that option. So Night Watcher is really solid. It screws over Vitruvian because, you know, all of your dervishes you spawn from Obelisks and from Rosh's Curse. Um, you know, they, they can't rush. They just, they just appear, can't do anything on that turn, and they disappear because they're ephemeral. See, check this out. Chromatic Cold finally coming down. I've been dumping everything into the Falcius, recognizing the, um, potential for the, uh, for that removal to come through. Yeah, taking way too much damage with the General and the Starfire Scarab waiting in the wings. Just too much for my opponent to handle. So we're, we're climbing. And don't get me wrong, this deck is pretty off meta. So we're sort of taking advantage of our current gold ranking. But it's, it's always nice to see a fresh deck regardless of the rank. The quality of decks has kind of gone up. The skill floor, I believe, has increased. So, you know, I don't want to... I'm not... Uh, I never do. I don't want to BM my opponents and say they're bad. You know, I just appreciate that. I do have a bit more wiggle room to, to play some, some off-meta stuff. Once again, we're up against Vanar. We're going to replace the Ameri Healer in the Entropic Decay. I almost said Entropic Gaze. <laughs> Entropic Decay. And we're going to hope for a two-drop because we have uh, eight possible combinations. Okay, Primus Fist. Perfect. We'll replace the, we'll replace the Astral Phasing. Just by the chance we might get a Pax or something. And I guess we'll just slap down the Primus Fist. Not bad. We'll see what my opponent does here. Ooh. That's actually really spooky. Because I don't really have a way to reach it right now. Don't need the, the Mirage Master. Shiro Puppy Dragon. Okay, okay. Now we're cooking. 
Hmm. I could actually play uh, Puppy Dragon on the tile and hit it with Second Wish. And then that way, um, I'd be taking this front mana, and then he couldn't just go Glacial Elemental General to clear it. But if he follows up with a Bone Chill Barrier, that would be enough procs, I think. So that's, that's a really tough choice. I think I'm going to go for it. Because this also gives me more front-facing positioning, right? More forward positioning here. So that I could potentially play the Dancing Blades to kill this Glacial Elemental next turn. I'm going to keep the Primus Fist up, I think. Hmm... Yeah, because if he plays Bone Chill, I want the Primus Fist to be as, as high HP as possible to to possibly take a few shots for the team. Another Glacial Elemental. So Bone Chill is just going to wipe my board. Okay, only a Crystal Cloaker. So Primus goes down. Shiro gets hit. He has to hit me. Check this out. Because uh, Scion Second Wish makes it so it doesn't take any damage from Generals. And so now I can step two down and play a dancing blades to take out this glacial elemental so i think i am gonna go for that because we can step one forward play the dancing blades here it'll get buffed by shiro and we get a free hit here we're gonna replace the dominate will because my opponent's running a vesper synergistic deck there's not going to be too many minions there that i actually want to take for myself plus we're only going into five mana on our next turn we want more options Ooh, borean bear now i've seen decks like this before and they're you let that borean bear get out of control they slap an ice blade dryad onto it and you know it just comes flying in to kill you interesting and myriad is a vesper so that's just a three three for three vesper pretty cool uh mid-range shenanigans there now do i want to make this trade hmm tough to say he's been summoning a lot of single vespers no bone chills so no massive uh shenanigans coming down from the glacial elemental Hmm, because my minions are getting pretty chipped out, I don't think I want the second Shiro. So, we're going to replace that, secretly hoping for the Astral Phasing to come back to me. Excuse me, so I could fly and uh, do some stuff there, but... We'll just play the Starfire Scarab over here. And... You know, we're going to get this damage in. I think we want to force our opponent to uh, to make that trade. And where do I want to move? Because he has access to Warbird next turn, doesn't he? Maybe not. But we still want to create some space. Yeah, so he does have access to Warbird. And I just want to keep my, my minions healthy. And it's, it's nice to see a minion-based deck go up against another because it comes down to positioning and things of that nature. Right now, I would say that he's at an advantage because Vesper minions love to, to get stuff on the board. They love to flood. And the Starfire Scarab is kind of my, uh, what do you call it, my lifeline. So if he has an answer for this, then it really sets me behind on the board. Dancing Blades has potential to... Uh, Get some nice trades in, though, however. Cool. I'll take that. Falcius would be really nice here for me to kill this, uh, this Myriad. Now the Blood Surge allows it to spawn a wall near me. Whew, that's lucky. Blazing Spine's not gonna trap me down anymore. And I don't think I mind taking this one damage. Because I can step one up, take that damage, and then just drop the uh, Amera Healer here. Yikes. Hmm. 
So I have a lot of choices here because I can have the Starfire Scarab uh, finish this row off, get this nice value, kill the Glacia Elemental, which might be a nice answer to this overall uh, board clear. And then just drop the Amara Healer down in this spot. And then that leaves me open because I'm thinking like, oh God, what am I going to, you know what I mean? What am I going to do? Ooh, no Shrek. Okay. So this is cool. We'll play the Amara Healer. And I'm going to take the damage from the Myriad. And then we'll kill the Glacial Elemental. So now I have two big threats on the board that he wants to dispel. And the Amara Healer actually cleans both of these up and then heals me for five. Because So now you see he wants to get to use his removal spells, his, his Chromatic Cold or his Aspect of the Fox on the Amara Healer. But the Starfire Scarab is going to do tons of damage next turn because of uh, Grandmaster No Shrek. Oh god, it's got Bone Chill. And see, so glad I killed that Glacial Elemental. I've played tons of Vesper decks in the past, and I know they typically can only fit in like maybe two copies at max. Ooh, that's, that's really smart. Check that out. Oh, that's so smart. The Starfire Scarab can't move. So, uh, right away... Hmm. Let me think. I think I can replace one first wish. If I get Astral Phasing, then I can just fly the Scarab out of the corner and kill him. Uh, what else? What else will win me this game? Because I'm super paranoid about, um, what's it called? Winter's Wake. Yeah, so we'll, we'll play one first wish. See what we draw. I think that we do just want to spam and fish for the astral phasing. Packs. Come on. Okay. And we'll leave the star. We aren't going to attack with the Starfire Scarab. When a minion kills a Bone Chill Barrier, he gets stunned. So we're just getting bodies on the board. I didn't kill this Bone Chill Barrier because it body blocks his general. So he wouldn't be able to, you know, step down and equip an artifact or something and do some some crazy stuff. Because he could easily, like, Concealing Shroud right now. Ah, see, there's the Saber Spine Tiger. So we don't have a Night Watcher in play. So he see, he's forced to clean up these, uh... Ooh, really smart. These Bone Chill Barriers are still body blocking me. And I can't clear a Bone Chill Barrier out of the way to bring the Scarab down. Hmm. So we want to... Well, we can just walk away now, which is really good. Maybe hold on to the Mirage Master. We don't need the packs this late in the game. Dancing Blades! Okay, okay. Let's see. I can... Can I Daisy Chain? Somehow? Damn. See, playing the Falseus last turn was actually a misplay. Because I could have just killed the... Uh, Bone Chill Barrier for free. If I had Falseus, I could actually Dancing Blades and then just walk up and kill him. Alright, so check this out. We'll, we'll play the Dancing Blades. And then... Hit this Bone Chill Barrier. And then play the Shiro here. Summon a Dervish. 
Still really, uh... Oops, roped. I was thinking about, I should probably just start clearing the bone chill barriers and get this scarab out of the corner, right? Because even if it's stunned for a turn, I can just walk down. That should have been my play, quite frankly, is when I didn't get the astral phasing a couple turns ago, is to kill the bone chill barrier, just eat that stun, and go from there. We got Warbird coming down. I'm still at a pretty healthy life total. My opponent has very low cards in hand. This late into the game, I'm expecting to see some Frigid Coronas, some Concealing Shrouds, some Meltdowns. Because Vespers, you know, love to do funky stuff in the late game. And the uh, Glacial Elementals, as you saw, allow them to control the board. But they need a gimmicky finisher to close the game out. The Vespers, you know, they need that Borean Bear to get ridiculously buffed. They need a Voice of the Wind to drop. And then suddenly they're, like, flooding the board beyond what they could possibly do. Grandmaster Embla... Ah, that's GG, because now I can kill this gravity well. Because I surrounded myself with bodies, Grandmaster Embla can only spawn two walls. Very unfortunate there for my opponent. I definitely see how the Winter's Wake was most likely the bursty gimmick finisher that I was talking about. So it's like a hybrid wall Vesper deck. So shout out to my opponent for drawing, trying something a bit uh, unique there for sure. We've got time for another one. So let's go in. Hopefully we aren't going to be up against uh, another Vanar opponent because before I recorded this episode, I was doing some final tweaking and testing of this deck. I was playing against Songhai and Magmar. Ooh, Vitruvian. Okay. Now this is a matchup where Mirage Master and Psychic Conduit could probably put in some serious work for us. Uh, do I want to hold the Entropic Decay? I think that's wise, because if my opponent's going to be running stuff like Scion Second Wish 2, then, you know, we could be in trouble. I suppose it's always nice to have that removal on hand. And this is uh, this is pretty interesting for, for my deck as well, because Saj has the ability to hit through these, these large bodies I'm throwing down, the Dancing Blades... And the way Scion Second Wish gives, you know, extra HP, um, Saj doesn't really care about that because of the Psionic Strike, allowing her to double her damage against minions. If she gets a really strong Wildfire Onk Spine Cleaver turn off, I, that could spell trouble for me, since this uh, deck does focus so heavily on using minions. But I get to go first, so that's a really huge advantage in the Vitruvian matchup, me being able to place my packs on the board. If my opponent answers with their own packs, they trade, but I get to act first and clear a dervish. Yep. Go, my friend. Yep. Whew. And you know, when your packs dies, it the dervishes spawn in the area in the radius around. I think I might go Primus Fist, Second Wish. I wish I could. Actually, I can. Instead of Sand Power, because that just gets that just gets hit. So, we play the Primus Fist, Second Wish, playing on Curve still. Cool, cool, cool. Because this is immune to general damage, this is going to be uh, a big counter to to Psionic Strike. And I'm even giving them this mana here because I have the Dancing Blades and another Primus Fist in my hand as possible removal for whatever he comes up with. If my opponent is forced to like buff the hell out of this Dervish to trade with the Primus Fist, I think that puts me really, really far ahead here. <gasps> Psychic Conduit, you scallywag! Okay, okay. See, my opponent knows what the dealio is. Oh, wow. I think it would have been smarter to use the Dervish and this buffed Dervish to clear the um, the Primus Fist instead. So now I get to keep this guy alive, and it gets its damage for free. <sighs> so let's see. I get to step down, do Sand Howler Primus Fist, and just keep the train going. And... 
And I think we're going to do it like this. So that we can play the Sand Howler behind. And just keep her in our little trap of death. My opponent is ahead card advantage wise. So we'll see if, if she's able to uh, flip the board really nicely here. Uh, that might play to her advantage. Saj typically isn't as minion focused, so my cards like Falcius and Dancing Blades aren't going to put in as much value. The good news is that I won't feel as hesitant to play them without their opening gambit triggering. Keeper of the Veil! What's it bring back? A Pax. Mm-hmm. So... This, uh, this is a nice double body block here to keep the Sand Howler away. Um, I can potentially Entropic Decay here. That kind of feels bad. Getting a Falcius would be really nice, I think. Hmm. I can also have this Primus Fist pop the packs. And just clean up the dervishes. Yeah, I like that. I like that play. Because now, yeah, I just attack here. We have the sand howler move in. Clear that. I wonder if my opponent is like, ha, you fell for my trap, or if she's like, oh, wow, that was actually really smart of you. But we're just going to buff this, get the hit in, and keep the aggression going. Once again, this is immune from general damage, so I think using the Psychic Conduit to clear my other Dervish was, instead of clearing this was, a, was actually a pretty severe uh, misplay that I'm taking advantage of. In the situation. Keeper of the Veil, another really interesting card uh, to see here. This Keeper of the Veil skin, normally the minion is white. This is the limited edition black one that came out with a special edition Humble Bundle offer that they did for Duelist a few months ago. I think it was back in November of last year to get the uh, black Keeper of the Veil skin. Ooh, man. Let's see. So if I Entropic Decay this thing, and he heals plus 5, that puts him at 14. And so I have uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So he would, he would live by 2 if I go that route with the Amera Healer. I can also use the Dancing Blades and just trade in a Primus Fist. And save the Entropic Decay for later. Because I have that option available to me, I think that is what we're going to go with. Get to trade in the 2-1. Two two because again, I, I'm ahead in life total. I don't really mind making that trade. And I don't want to spawn a Dervish. No, 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 no. I want to Scion's first wish. Hmm. I suppose the positioning doesn't matter. Do I leave the Sand Howler alive? No. Just get the damage in while I have it. My, my opponent has the potential to play a second Amara Healer there, so perhaps I could have kept the second Entropic Decay. Uh, Entropic Decay. Yep, so there's the second one. Hmm. Curious. You fool! Now that's, that's really cheeky. Hmm. Looking for the uh, the astral phasing. Huh. That's 
cool. Just walk away, play no shrack. <laughs> the funny thing too is my opponent could have astral phasing to bring the Amara healer into range and just slap me silly, which would be hel it would be absolutely hilarious. Don't get me wrong. Um, the alternate play would be to move the dancing blades forward, hit it with cosmic flesh, and then play the chaos elemental up here. But if he's got like Falcius Sonic Strike, he gets to one shot the dancing blades. Yeah, I think we just walk away here. Because he buffed the Amara Healer, me buffing the Dancing Blades doesn't allow the Amara Healer to uh to trade itself into the Dancing Blades. This positioning keeps Sinus Saj in this spot, and then the Chaos Elemental can come around and slay. Potential plays here would be an Entropic Decay here bringing the Amara Healer up to uh, to taunt. But because I moved the Primus Fist forward, it uh, really takes away a lot of positioning options because he needs to make sure that this is all provoked. Keeper of the Veil possibly bringing back the other uh, Amara Healer. No. All right, so this Dervish walks forward, kills the Amara Healer. He heals up to six, and then I have four, five, six with the Primus Fist. Well played. Chaos Elemental coming through for me there. And shout out to my opponent for using the value of Keeper of the Veil to bring those uh, minions back. Were that last Pax the other Amara Healer that I had dealt with? would have been extremely problematic for me. Not developing the no shrack there would have been the mega punish. But we're going to tip, and that is three matches down. Thank you for joining me for this somewhat long episode. But I haven't played Vitruvian in a long time, and I was really glad that uh, this deck that I sort of thought up while I was at work actually uh, comes through and looks uh, pretty, pretty significant. Uh, so thank you for joining me, and I will see you next time. You have a good one.